A 5 liter Ford is an awesome motor. You know what's even better than a 302? A 351. You know what's even better than a 351? A 408. Guess what's even better than a 408? A 408 on nitrous. The way I see it, there are basically two ways to look at this video. The first way is, what happens if I build a 408 stroker? You know, from a 351 Windsor. And they want a little more power, then a little more power, then a little more power. You know how we do it. We always want more power. The other way to look at it, how do we build a nitrous injected 408 stroker right from the get go? Either way, it's a win win. Let's check it out. After the last video on block splitting the 5 liter 302, we thought we'd give his big brother a little bit of chance here and go with the 351 Windsor. So we built a stroke or a 351 Windsor because, you know, if a 351 is good, then obviously a 400 inch 351 is even better. So we wanted to make some serious power and show how these kinds of things progress and how you make more and more power with each of these projects. It starts out as a stock 351 from the wrecking yard and soon snowballs into something that's much grander than we originally anticipated. So what we wanted to do was build a 408. So I went and got a 351 Windsor from the wrecking yard and I got a late model hydraulic roller block because I like working with a hydraulic roller cam. It's just easier and we <laughs> we became a little gun shy of the um, hydraulic flat tappet cams after we went through bad batches of lifters and cams and stuff and you know I don't know I just don't like going through all the trouble of putting the uh, breaking lube and oil and all that stuff and breaking them in with a hydraulic with a hydraulic roller cam you just stick it in there and it works really good i mean we do flat tap and stuff too but it's a lot of work and i like the hydraulic roller stuff it seems to last forever so we we usually go that route and i got a hydraulic roller block and we punch it out to 408 cubic inches by installing a four inch stroker crank and rods from speedmaster we got some inexpensive stuff and that stuff worked good we've used it before a lot and we also went 30 over on the bore and installed a set of uh, Molly Motorsports forged pistons. And they were a dish piston. And when we combined that piston with the 66cc chamber of the 11R head that we use, this produced a compression ratio of about 10.5 to 1. So it was kind of a street-friendly deal, especially with an aluminum head. So we had a basically forged rotating assembly. We had the hydraulic roller block, and then we had a forged crank, forged rods, and forged pistons. We put enough ring gap in it. I put these at about 27 or 28, so we'd have enough if we wanted to run nitrous, which we ended up doing on this combination. So we first equipped this with a TFS Stage 3 camshaft, and that Stage 3 cam was a 574-595 lift split, so it had good lift, and you could take advantage of what those heads had to offer. It was a 236-248 degree duration split at 110 degree lobe separation angle. We secured all this stuff together with Felpro gaskets, obviously, and, and ARP headsets. I like using the ARP stuff, especially for your headsets. They work really well. And like I said, we topped this off with a set of TrickFlow 205 11R heads. And the first thing I have to say about the 11R heads is that <laughs> I really like the way that they look externally. It looks like a billet head the way that they're machined. And so they're really pretty impressive. And, and besides that, they flow really well and they make good power, which is a good combination. I mean, these things flowed 320 CFM, which is a more than enough to support way over 600 horsepower, which was going to be beyond where we were going. They had a 208-16 valve combination. They had a spring package on it, included titanium retainers, and was enough for our hydraulic roller application and we were going to go up in camshaft so we wanted to make sure that we had enough spring rate so these things work really well and then we topped all this off to get things started with a simple rpm dual plane rpm air gap intake and a 950 carburetor 950 holly carburetor inch and three quarter long tube headers and and in truth maybe this 408 could have eventually used bigger headers but these are the fox chassis headers that we always use msd distributor and then we tuned everything and ran it and here's what we got when we put our combination together our 408 produced 534 horsepower and 543 foot pounds of torque and the first thing you should notice and if you're doing a lot of watching on these videos and stuff and you watch a lot of my stuff if a combination makes more torque than it makes horsepower, that means something in the combination is fairly mild, either the camshaft or the cylinder head or something. And a, a, a really performance combination, a real performance combination, is going to make more horsepower than torque. So if it makes more torque, that means there's room left for improvement. So now let's take a look and see what happens when we 
upgraded from this base combination. Okay, here's where things start progressing with our 408. We've got a 408 with a healthy cam and good set of cylinder heads, and we have a dual plane intake manifold on it, and it's not quite making the power that we thought it would or that we hoped it would. I mean, it's a good combination. It would be fun to drive around. It's got plenty of torque. It would spin the tires like <laughs> all day long as you go get ice cream and stuff. So it would, work, it would work really well for that. But like everything else, you go, hey, look, I really want more power. So here's how you get more power. On a 408, it's a good idea, especially with this much head and this much camshaft, to change the intake manifold. The dual plane works very well, but since we're making more torque than horsepower, something's holding this back. So we step up to, in this case, we stepped up to a trick flow single plane intake to replace the dual plane RPM air gap, which works really well, but it was originally designed for a 351 Windsor and not for a 408. So here's what happened when we installed a single plane intake from trick flow. We got some very serious gains. So our combination was now making 569.5. So we're going to call that 570 horsepower. So it's a big jump up from our, what, 534? Yeah, 534 horsepower. So that was a pretty serious jump. And it makes more peak power or more power from about 4,600 on up. But in our typical single plane, dual plane trade-off thing, we do trade off a lot of low speed power. Now, if you take a look at it, this is a pretty big, it's a pretty big deficit here. We're going from 532 foot pounds down to 491 foot pounds. So, you know, anytime you lose 40 or more foot pounds of torque, you're definitely going to feel that. But on the plus side, even though it's a single plane manifold and we lost that much torque, you might not notice that that was gone because the thing is still making nearly 500 foot-pounds of torque, which is still really good and more than enough to turn the tires. You know, if you put this in a Fox chassis Mustang or really almost anything, it would still be making a ton of power. Plus, it would rev out. If you were going to go to 6,500, the single plane would be making some serious power out here. So in my opinion, if I was going to take this thing to the track at all, I think I would go with the single plane on this combination. And our peak torque on this thing, was actually down slightly from the from the RPM air gap. It was at 540 foot-pounds of torque. It just happened a little later in the RPM, which is typical for a single plane, dual plane. You tend to shift that out. So now let's take a look and see what happens when we want to take the next step up and make even more power with our for our 408. We've got our 408 Ford Stroker. You know, it's 10 and a half to one. We've got good heads on it. We've got a good intake, decent camshaft in it, and it's making 570 horsepower. But you know what? The only thing better than a 570 horsepower 408 is one that makes 600. <laughs> the question is, how do we get this thing to make 600 horsepower? I mean, we have a good camshaft in it. We have good cylinder heads. We've already upgraded the intake from our dual plane RPM up to our single plane trick flow head. I mean, our trick flow intake manifold, the single plane deal, with a 4150. We still got it. We've got a good 950 XP carburetor on there, so all the things are there. Well, what this thing needs now, what every stroker needs now, is <laughs> to make more power, is more camshaft. Sure, we could go up in compression, and we could go up even more in displacement, make a 427 instead of a 408. But the easiest thing to do now is to step up in camshaft. So we have a stage three trick flow camshaft in there now. So what we did was step up to a stage five camshaft. And just like with our single plane, dual plane, we will see that even though we do pick up quite a bit of power, there's always a trade-off associated with going with Wilder camshaft. So what we did was stick the stage five camshaft in there. And that camshaft was a 595 lift, both intake and exhaust. So near 600 lift, which is plenty. But it's got a 250, 254 degree duration split, which is up quite a bit from our previous, what was the other one, 236, 248. So up a lot in intake duration and up a lot in exhaust duration. Same 110 degree lobe separation angle. So we've got now a fairly serious camshaft in here. But look, it made fairly, fairly serious power too. We're making peak power out past 6,500 RPM, where we're right at 600 horsepower, 601. Peak torque is down just slightly to 
534 foot pounds of torque. And as you know, it's kind of happening later in the RPM range. But it's obvious that the big cam likes the fact that we have plenty of cylinder head flow in that 11R, the 205 11R head. It likes the single plane intake. And it was a good match for power production higher in the RPM range. If you take a look down here in the 4,500 RPM range, we lost a bit of power, not a lot compared to the smaller cam. You know, we lost maybe, well, we went down from 531 to 517 foot-pounds of torque down here in the 4,000 RPM range. But if you were drag racing this car, which is now kind of where we're shifting the trend toward with this Stage 5 cam and the, and the single-plane intake as a more kind of a race-oriented deal, if you were at the track, this combination would definitely go faster. So now it's a 600 horsepower uh, 408, which is a, you know, that's now a fairly serious combination. And we're being able to take advantage of what those 11R heads have to offer. And in fact, they have even more head flow and will support even more power. If we went up in compression now, which is kind of what I would do, it would be the next step. Instead of kind of having a middle of the road 10.5 to 1, which I chose because we could add boost to it from a centrifugal blower. We could add nitrous, you know, we could add a turbo. But if you were doing a dedicated deal, you know, you'd have more static compression ratio if you're just going to do an NA combination. So now let's take a look at the final thing where we <laughs> what we added now was nitrous. So let's take a look and see. We added a nice plate system on here. And jumped it up right up near 800 horsepower. So, and we could engage it obviously a lot earlier and run it from 4,500 to 6,500 or from 4,000 to 6,500, which is what you would do with nitrous because then you'd have more average power production. So we just kind of wanted to show you what the gain was. We uh, added a nitrous kit and I'll go ahead and give you the specs on the nitrous kit. It had a 67 nitrous jet and a 54 fuel jet. It was a simple plate system and it was a Zex kit. It works really well, you know, makes plenty of power. And so now our 408, our 600 horsepower 408, is nearly an 800 horsepower 408 with the nitrous kit. So we've gone from, you know, where did we start this thing out at, uh, you know, less than 550 horsepower, and now we're up near 800 horsepower, and that's how these combinations go. You want a little bit of power, and then you want a little bit more, and then you want a little bit more, and then you want a whole bunch more, and so we added a power adder, which was a good way to finish this thing off. Let's get to our clues. What did you guys think about the test on our 408 stroker? Here's my takeaway. If you're concerned about splitting the block on a 5 liter 302, step up to the 351 Windsor. I know that block is a lot stronger. We've made over a thousand horsepower using turbos, and I'm not even sure that's the limit. I need to revisit that Big Bang 351. Who wants to see it? I know I do. On this 408, it was an impressive combination. Made 600 horsepower NA and almost 800 with nitrous. With that combination, you're gonna win a lot of races. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing coming up.